hello, hello. <clears throat> well, it's early. Not really that early. It's about 9.30 on Saturday. And, um... <coughs> I am... I am here in my little Costa del Green. There's the logo. So, um, I'm here in Costa del Green, uh, camper trailer, mobile unit, and, um... Uh, I was just listening to Phil Keggy. Rise up, O oh man of God. I wonder if I can play that for you real quick. Let's, let's see if I can. This dawned on me I could do that now that I've got this new technology. So hang on. Hang on. Yeah, another benefit here. Uh, this week, as you might remember, I was. Uh, oh, baby. I was given the gift of uh, a miracle. It just dawned on me I could do this. This is amazing. Okay. Rise up, O oh man of God. Feel cakey. Okay, let's see. One of the benefits of Bible college. Listen anywhere, anytime. All your music, no interruptions. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, pretty cool. I can do this. This is amazing. So, this song, um, it's just incredible to me because it goes back to my uh, my early days at Bible College. And one of my best friends who is still in the church and still around. This was this was his his musician. He loved Phil Keggy. Be done with lesser things. Of heart and soul and mind and strength. To serve the King of Kings. To serve the King of Kings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the night of wrong. Amen, amen, amen. Some more to now than ever was. That's our strength. He is our strength. He is our strength. Not our might, not our power, not our thoughts. Christ. Let me just say real quickly as we're listening to Phil Keggy speak to us that um, he is, he has that little, it's like, it's like we're going to war, it's a battle. And even back in the 1970s, when I went to Bible college, it was a battle. It's about the battle, it's about the fight. And um, I'm going to go to a funeral in a few minutes, That's, I'm going to get my good shirt on and I'm going to go to a funeral. And <coughs> um, I am um, I was praying last night 
because I always like to speak at a funeral if I can. If I can speak up, I want to speak up. So I like talking. Talking means a lot. I feel like I can bring people closer to Christ and I want to do that. That's Bob's Daily Devo. <laughs> um, and no, life is not all about J. Vernon McGee and let's turn to this chapter and no, it's 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 more than it's more than just Bible study. It's more than just worship. It's more than just God, 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 Spirit, Spirit, Spirit. No, it's it's living. It's real life. I mean, you know, here I am. I'm in my little Casa del Green at nine. It's nearly ten a.m. I'm like, <coughs> in my mind, in my mind, in my heart, I was like, how am I going to fill up Saturday morning? How am I going to do that? What's going to happen? Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. And I was just like. And the Lord is like, rest, child, rest. I got my little fan going here. There's my little box of all, everything I own is that little box there. I got my little clips. And um, I got my little skylight. And uh, I'm, I'm here resting in the Casa del Green uh, suite here. And it's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely a joy to be here. It's like, I wake up at like 9.30 or whatever, I'm just like, so peaceful, so quiet. This season is not gonna last forever. I'm gonna soon be home and this camping trip will be over and I'll be like, okay. <laughs> you know, 6 a.m., kids are screaming and people are yelling, oh, I want to make me a pancake breakfast, make me a trampoline breakfast, make me the country breakfast, make me the, you know, we're going to have things to do and places to go and people to see. It's going to be, but for right now, resting. I tweeted today and I, uh, Let me see if I have that on this phone here. Well, so my point for the funeral is that I'm going to, you know, my friend who died is not that old. My friend who died was very young. I mean, and uh, their husband was, <coughs> her husband was also fairly young. Tall, lanky man, big, beautiful, you know, mustache, and one of the nicest guys I ever met. Went to the airport to pick up his daughter, and to just, just died right there in the chair. And he had no idea he was going to die. He just gone. And I talked to the last time I talked to my friend uh, Val. Uh, you know, I had no idea that was the last time I was going to talk to her. No idea in the world. I mean, I, I would have, I would have just, I would have stopped my work and just gotten off work and just, you know, if I had known, I didn't know. I mean, well, I'm not, I'm not feeling very good, Bob. And I, uh, I thought, okay, well, you know, I'll pray for you. All right, God bless you. No idea that was it. That was the last time I talked to her. Very, very, um, so, since we don't know, since we don't know, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. We have to rise up. I'm not going to spend my day here in this bed. I'm, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get going. I'm going to start the engine. And I'm going to take off. And I have some pictures waiting. I'm going to get some of the pictures of Bethany Rose and I'm going to... I haven't, I haven't been published here. They're going to start publishing them in about 20 minutes. And so I got to go pick those up and I'll have those with me today. And <clears throat> so I'll have some old pictures of my baby. I looked at the little baby that they had on the newsreels about uh, the prince, the prince and the princess, and they had a baby. And I thought, wow. <coughs> my baby hasn't got anything. Their baby hasn't got anything on my baby. The babies are babies. You know, they're beautiful. They're beautiful, beautiful people. I was able yesterday to, to take a look at the foot, you know, of uh, little Bethany Rose. And I was like, wow, 
I wanted to, I wanted to show my boss, you know, Mrs. Powell, who was, you know, visiting with us, and uh, I said, look, her whole foot is no bigger than, you know, my, my toe was like yay big, and her foot was this big, and it was like, it was a match, it was like, just like my boy Bob, uh, little Bob, you know, little Bob, L-I-L Bob, little Bob, his whole foot was no bigger than my big toe, just like, just like little Bethany, I mean, it's a miracle how, and I was watching my uh, my boss, and her son is now like six four, and she's very small. I mean, she's a very small woman, really, you know, almost like a Hetty Lang character, you know, from NCSLA. There's this huge hulking man, and and he's just like <coughs> he's just over his mother. I thought, wow, talk about the acorn seed and. You know, the giant oak tree or the redwoods that grow up so tall. You know, they started off as little tiny little, little, little sphinx there. So. My event tonight was canceled. And uh, I have another event that got thrown in. So I'm trusting the Lord. I'm trusting the Lord. I'm trusting the Lord. I'm believing that God is... God is good. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to get ready. As we go out, let's just finish up this song. And um, remember that to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and love our neighbors, ourselves, that's our goal. That's our main mission. High the cross of Christ. <coughs> His brothers are the Son of Man. YouTube, Phil Keggy. Be done with lesser things. People ask me sometimes, they say, well, you know, and I ask, my, I ask myself at the time, I was like, what are you doing? I'm 60 years old, I'm starting again. I'm starting a whole nother, whole nother obligation. I'm committing myself back to family. Why am I doing that? What, what I mean, these are the golden years. <laughs> you know the old saying, the only thing golden is my... <laughs> but no, I, this is it, this is my heart. This song is my heart to serve the King of Kings. I'm a fantastic father. I'm a good boy. I do my very best. I have an excellent heart. I've had people that tried to smear things on me. I, I, uh, I just saw an Oprah episode where a little boy was captured in the bathroom. This is about 2000. And she interviewed this boy. He, he had, At the time that she interviewed him, he was like 19 years old. But, but he had been kept in a bathroom, wrapped in fencing, locked with a lock. Just, and his mother did the same thing to his face that my mother did to me. I'm just like, that's a weird, that's a really weird and a really bad thing when there's a boy, you know, now a man on national television and Oprah is validating his trauma. Oprah is validating his, his struggle. Oprah is validating, she's, she's, she's opening up. And uh, she is declaring that this was wrong. And the dad is in jail for years and years and years. And I suffered similar, 
similarly, I'm like, I never realized how I suffered. I never realized how horrible it was. I just kind of, oh yeah, oh yeah, my mother beat me and she smeared my face with feces and oh yeah, uh, it just, you know, just a regular day. And then, but Oprah's got this boy on the TV and he's getting all this sympathy and love and understanding because he suffered like I suffered. And I'm like, I, I just thought it was the strangest thing. Who would do that to a human being? Who would do that to a little boy? <coughs> we just got Bethany, a little tiny duck. Um, and the little duck has like a little thermometer in it. And this little thermometer, um, oh, don't fall, this is a fan, don't fall. <laughs> and this little duck has a little thermometer. And I can remember distinctly, my mother, I can show you the tub. My mother was going to put me into, into a, a tub of scalding water. It was scalding. It was, you know, I think it burned me because there was nobody else there. But later on, people said that water had to be scalding because you burned me. I mean, <coughs> so. So why does, why does this boy reach out to God? Because I, I didn't get a very good parent matchup. You know, my mom and dad, they made love, they made me. And God, God put in my spirit, God put in my heart a good soul and a good character. And I am a nice person, I'm a good person. And God loves me and God God and I are connected. He's adopted me. He's forgiven me. He's saved me from my sins. He's made it to where my two children, you know, and, and all I have four children on my own. And um, my, on my own, with my wives. And, but the thing is, is I, I, never, I never once treated my children horribly like that, ever. I, I, um, it's funny, my son, my son never got one swat, not one swat ever. We've had some struggles, for sure, you know, we've had some tassels and some tussles, and my son's a big guy like me, he's like, he could take me out at this point, you know, but, but as far as, like, the sufferings that I suffered, no, not a chance. All right, well, I gotta run, but let's go up with this. Give me a call, would you? 213-713-8954. 8954green.att.net. On the Twitter, Mr. Bob at Bob Bob 8954 Of course, you're watching Bob's Daily Devo. I love you. God bless.